so generally, um, IVF, uh, in vitro fertilization, is uh, a successful uh, procedure um, used for um, tackling fertility problems. Um, generally speaking, the success is one in three couples. So one in three patients usually, around 30%, um, uh, manage to become pregnant. And then obviously, from the pregnancy um, to the life birth is a long journey and lots can go wrong. So out of the positive pregnancy tests, usually, unfortunately, one in four couples miscarry. And also around 3%, one to 3% can experience ectopic pregnancies, which are pregnancies outside the uterus, it can be life-threatening. Um, the life birth rate after IVF uh, is around one in four couples. This is, uh, generally speaking, for a general population, but obviously each individual patient's got different figures according to the age, the reasons for infertility, uh, and the quality of the embryos transferred. There are several indications for IVF. Um, most of the, uh, the most common indication why IVF was developed was for uh, problems with the tubes. The tubes are uh, part of the women reproductive um, tract organs, and, and they are the place uh, where the egg and the sperm meet and the baby is actually created. The embryo, which is the little baby, then travels back from the tube to the uterus to implant, and that traveling takes around five days. So if there is a blockage in your tube, or both tubes, or one of the tube, then um, there is no way the egg and the sperm can meet, so there is no way that the embryo can be created, the baby can be created. So that is one reason for IVF because the IVF will make that happen in the tube outside your body. In the lab, we do put the eggs and the sperm, we create uh, the little embryo, the little baby, and then we transfer that back to your womb to implant. Um, the fallopian tube also has got another function, which is to push the embryo back to the uterus. Sometimes that function is um, damaged, and that is when women end up with ectopic pregnancies, which are the pregnancies outside the uterus, either in the fallopian tube or in the ovaries or in the, um, anywhere in, inside your belly. These are very dangerous scenarios and it's very important that we predict who is at risk of ectopic and then we obviously follow that up. Other indications for IVF is the so-called unexplained subfertility, which happens in one in three couples, where we do not know why the um, pregnancy doesn't establish, um, and is also called unknown subfertility. So if patients have been trying to conceive for a year regularly and nothing happens, then some investigations are done. And, uh, and then if nothing, wrong is found, we call that as unexplained, and one, one, one treatment to tackle the unexplained subfertility could be IVF. Because with IVF, we actually put together the egg and the sperm, and we see uh, how they interact with each other, basically if they like each other, we can see if the sperm is interested in the egg, if the egg looks nice and normal, and, um, and ultimately, we can have the final product, which is the little embryo or the little baby to transfer back to your womb. Um, obviously, other indications for IVF will be when same-sex couples or single women wants to have uh, uh, treatment using donor sperm, and, and, and that could be done by uh, IVF. And patients of advanced age um, with a 
reduce egg reserve might decide to speed up the process of reproduction by doing IVF. So there are other different, you know, other, other different reasons. Um, the, the treatment is more effective, obviously, in, in young age, uh, with, in women with good egg reserve, and, uh, and also quite successful for tubal subfertility, as explained at the beginning. Um, it is very important that uh, when uh, you decide to become pregnant, you change your lifestyle a little bit. So it's important to, to, to lose weight if you are overweight, to stop smoking, to eat healthy, healthy diet, balanced, to exercise, um, and, um, and obviously um, trying to relax and reduce the anxiety and the stress that can be related to the attempt to conceive. This could be very stressful because uh, it's the most natural things to happen, but when it doesn't happen, it can just drive you crazy. So it's very important that you think about your mental health as well and trying to find things that um, distract you and, and think about it as, as a bit of fun really more than a commitment and job but um, overall um, there are lots of um, additional um, uh, helps that uh, you can get from um, counseling coaching um, alternative remedies such as aromatherapy, reflexology, acupuncture, things that can help in relaxing and, and, and while you, you, you're trying for a baby. Um, the health aspect, uh, the healthy lifestyle is very important. It's also important to start some multivitamins. Uh, I would suggest the one that are um, indicated for the preconception or pregnancy. Uh, these multivitamins, um, they don't have to be a special brand, but they have to be indicated uh, for pregnancy. There are some uh, vitamins in the generic multivitamins that are toxic in pregnancy. That's why they must be avoided. Um, it's very important to have the appropriate amount of folic acid. The folic acid is a vitamin which uh, has been shown to prevent um, uh, spina bifida and neurotubal effect, defects in the baby. So it's very important to, to take uh, the folic acid alongside the vitamins, in particular the vitamin D, uh, which uh, is linked to improving fertility success. Um, so that is obviously for both a male, a man and woman. Uh, it's very important to look after the sperm. So it's uh, again very important to stop smoking, um, have a, a small consumption of alcohol um, and, and take some uh, vitamins and supplements. IVF is obviously a medical procedure uh, which involves um, the, a surgical procedure um, called um, oocyte egg collection, and which is when we re remove the eggs uh, from the ovaries. Um, and that surgical procedures can, can carry some risks related to the sedation or the anesthesia, but also related to internal injuries. The risks are really very, very low, but uh, they, you know, it could happen to have some uh, injuries to the internal organs, such as the blood or the bowel or blood vessels. It can also carry a risk of infection. So we have to be aware of these potential complications related to the actual surgical act of removing the eggs. Other potential risks relating to the procedure, they are obviously related to the ovarian stimulation. When you inject drugs to make your eggs grow, um, this could lead to an over response from your ovaries. Um, and the ovaries uh, start uh, swelling up, becoming really large with lots of eggs uh, there. Um, and, and, and that can give a sense of feeling heavy and painful. Um, and in the very 
worst scenario, patients can experience what is called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or, or HSS. And this syndrome requires hospitalization because uh, it can get um, worst with time and with pregnancy. So it's very important that uh, um, your doctors look after you and if you have any symptoms or signs of uh, uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, um, you communicate very close with your uh, fertility doctors and nurses. Um, other potential complications, as I mentioned at the beginning, could be ectopic pregnancy, which is slightly increased by the fact that we transfer the uterus, um, at the, uh, sorry, transfer the embryo at the top of the uterus uh, in a position which is very close to the fallopian tube. And occasionally these embryos move around and go and implant in the tube. So that is, um, happens in between one to three percent of the IVF treatment. Miscarriages, they're not particularly increased after IVF, but one in four couples miscarry in the first pregnancy. So it's perfectly normal, unfortunately, to have an unviable pregnancy. Um, and other things that we consider a complication, but uh, patients usually is very happy with, um, is multiple pregnancy. Multiple pregnancies, um, are a complication because uh, they might increase your risk of miscarrying and also uh, they will increase the uh, obstetrics risk during the uh, pregnancy itself. There is an increased risk of developing diabetes or intrauterine growth restrictions, preterm labors and uh, some of the twins, you know, uh, born early might have to uh, go to special care and might carry disabilities um, for their whole life. So it's very important that we try to reduce the multiple births um, as much as we can. Success. Success is, uh, is very important in IVF. At the end of the day, uh, we all work towards the same goal, which is to have an healthy baby. Um, but uh, the success is mainly driven by the woman's age. Um, as women, we are born with a pool of eggs, a uh, pool of follicles, and we are born with many of them, like millions. But then by the time we reach puberty, this uh, we lose lots of our eggs. And then by the time we reach actually fertile age and we start trying for a baby, our number, the number of eggs available to us in the all fertile time is probably around 200, 300 eggs. So, and those eggs, um, they stay with us for the whole life. So they don't change. They don't die and grow again, like skin or like hair. They, they just cells that are in our ovary since we were born. So obviously the egg quality of someone who is over 40 is not the same egg quality of the same person while she was 20 or in their 20s. So it's very important to think, to, to, to think about. The IVF, as I said, is not risk-free um, and it does involve um, the stimulation and the retrieval of the eggs and the implant of the, of the embryo in the uterus. So it's, it's very important to take it easy during the procedure, um, in particular to um, avoid strenuous exercise. Your ovaries will become bigger uh, during the stimulation phase and um, obviously um, if you have, um, you know, a horse riding competition or if you go for Zumba classes, that might increase the risk of ovarian torsion, which could be a, a gynecological emergency scenario or risk of uh, um, your eggs to, to fill up with blood. So it's, it's very important to take it easy during the stimulation and obviously also during the, after the egg collection. And after the embryo transfer, uh, th there could be a risk of uh, developing ectopic, as I said, miscarriages, so things might not happen in the way we want. So again, it's important that you 
take that into consideration. Um, it is safe, for example, to travel or, or to, to, to do gentle exercise, walk, work as well, and gentle work, walks. But um, we have always to keep in mind that there can be things that can happen, some complications. So always be aware that, um, if, for example, if you travel, don't go for a long or flight and go to a place where you can have medical care and attention if needed. Um, so this kind of common sense um, advices um, would be also available uh, in, in, the, in the clinic where you're having your treatment and, and by your doctor.